Take responsibility for yourself. Exercise your self-motivation and self-determination. Practice free enterprise in your holistic home office. Avoid selfish ambition, which is the dark side of human nature. Read all the stories at homeoffice.studio and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. Hi, um, this is another issue I thought I would make a video about as uh, this idea of artificial intelligence, you know, and everybody being so worried about that. And I'm not saying necessarily that being worried about it is a bad thing, because it, it's something we definitely need to be very careful about. I agree that artificial intelligence is the most powerful weapon mankind has ever designed, you know. And uh, that's one of the reasons I, you know, talk about God and religion so much in these videos, because I believe that that's the only, you know, it doesn't work without that, you know, everybody understanding God makes the rules and following those rules made by God, you know. It's the whole uh, created by religious people for religious people idea. And uh, so I, uh, I think it is that artificial intelligence is a very valuable tool. I, I think this extension of human consciousness this, uh, with artificial intelligence is a good thing. It's not necessarily, it's not really good or bad. It's what people do with it that can be good or bad. Same with guns or any other machine. It's not, the machine is not good or bad. That's, it's what people do with it, you know, that is, makes, you know, that's what's good or bad. And so I just wanted to mention that and say, you know, I think that this, it's a very interesting story. You know, studying the, the interface between the brain and the mind is a very interesting topic. You know, um, it's, you know, you have a lot of, you know, being able to work on that is, is a very valuable, very powerful you know, medicine and um, being able to, you know, understand the interface between human consciousness and artificial intelligence is also very valuable. You know, I've heard of experiments where they're doing, ex you know, having a experimental animal connected to the internet, you know, connected, you know, to the machine in North Carolina controlling a robot in Japan. And, you know, and using that to, to, to teach, you know, learn about, we're able to do that. You know, with all the military wounded warriors, you know, and be, trying to make their life as, you know, better, learning how to create artificial legs and things like that is, is very valuable. Being able to do that is a very excellent you know, that's a very good thing, you know, to be able to, like, say somebody that lost their legs, to be able to walk with artificial legs, this is a good thing. And it's the same thing with artificial intelligence. We can expand, you know, I like my little smartphone. I use it all the time. I probably, I probably use this stuff too much. I don't know, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of dedicated my mind most people aren't going to do you do like I do and just work on the internet all the time that's probably you know that that wouldn't be necessarily a good thing if everybody did that all the time and I know a lot of people would rather buy their technology from a corporation like Microsoft or Apple or Google than use than build their own artificial intelligence with uh, you know Linux and free and open source software. So, but I'm just trying to add my little, you know, opinion about how things ought to be. Um, everything I say is my opinion. You know, I'm no authority. I have no authority over anybody. I don't even have authority over me. You know, God, 
is the authority here and trying to I'm working on trying to do that and be more and more spiritual and practice spirituality in my life and I recommend you do that too both in your career in your personal life in every detail of your life always you know be spiritual and practice spirituality in every detail of your life and um, but you know it's just I just was watching some videos about people talking about how dangerous artificial intelligence is in which I agree it is dangerous and uh, it's something you know we need it is supply it's providing an entirely new technology beyond anything that's ever existed before and our laws need to be able to catch up to that you know things like privacy you know what exactly is you know should we just let these corporations come up with their own rules or should the state say you know this is what you know people have rights and contracts you know have been a big part of our civilization for hundreds of years now you know there you know if you sign a country you know the whole free and open the whole private property versus free and open source software you know issue you know, the thing I'm trying to, you know, make popular is uh, private ownership, you know, that you own the private property, you know, build your own means of production, own your own means of production. And that private property is a good thing that you should be responsible for. And, you know, and it's, you know, ultimately God owns all the property, but if you own your property, you know, I, I I go back and forth between thinking free and open source, everything is the way to go, and you owning your own prop, private property. The one thing I'm not for in, in any way, shape, or form is corporations owning all the property. I think that's one of the most, it's kind of why I'm not all that worried about the United States, you know, because it's already so corrupt. It's, it doesn't even resemble the the whole thing where they the families owned the farm and they they could grow whatever they wanted to, and if you know, and they could do whatever they wanted to. It's free enterprise and keep private ownership of the means of production, and they traded whatever they could produce over what they needed to to eat, you know, survive for themselves all the excess was traded and you know and out of that there was there's been big companies part being part of that all along but right about after world war ii for something i don't know exactly you know there's a whole bunch of rumors and everything but when they started the first thing they did is they put a tax on when people if somebody died and they gave their ranch their farm to their kids their kids had to pay taxes for that they were like as in that was the income and so the taxes were so high that the kids had to sell the farm just to pay the taxes and so the corporations bought up all the farmland so now instead of having family farms you know thousands and thousands of family farms all over the united states we have corporations owning all the farmland and recently I've heard that uh, they're buying up houses. So instead of owning your house, you can just rent one from some big giant corporation, you know. And that's not, that's not capitalism. It's, it's, it's not freedom. It's not free enterprise. It's, not, it's just, it's kind of what we were fighting against. World War II was a fight against national socialism and that's what national socialism is. It's corporations controlled by the state controlling everything. You know, the state controlling everything via corporations, you know, using corporations to control the economy. That's what national socialism is. And we fought against them and defeated them in World War II and somehow or another, they ended up taking over the United States. It's ridiculous, you know? Now the communists are coming in, that's terrible. You know, it's like all the people, and we won the battle, the competition, we won all the competition, but then we were just 
I guess we got so arrogant that we figured we didn't have to keep protecting ourselves against that. And now our state is just as communist as any other country. I, you know, it's like, I'm kind of getting it. You know, I'm, I'm talking about economics, you know, free enterprise and, and self-determination, you know, is a good thing. And I, I support that and defend that. And I don't want to be part of, you know, any kind of, you know, I call it the imperial pyramid where you have a, a small minority of people they get a, an advantage over you know of everybody else and then they use their advantage to increase their advantage and so you end up with a, a few rich, really rich people you know thinking they're better than everybody else and you know millions of poor people that are struggling to survive and what I'm trying to abolish that whole system I'm trying to uh, you know replace the uh, you know the military industrial complex with real freedom real real equality and justice for all people everywhere you know it's got to be global too it can't be you know one nation you know one part of the human race is free and other parts of it are not that's not sustainable you know it's got to be global the whole entire human race is free it doesn't matter what race you are it doesn't matter what family you are you know every single human being is part of this and there's going to be differences you know people some people are smarter than other people and you know and different personalities and everything and that's normal and natural and healthy it's a good thing you know we don't want everybody the same that would be boring but i just wanted to make this video just in response to those worries about artificial intelligence because that's exactly what I'm trying to teach you to do is build your own artificial intelligence and I don't know a whole lot about artificial intelligence believe me I'm just you know a computer guy having fun playing around with computers but I'm, I'm, I am playing around with them and I'm looking and trying to understand okay how does this work you know, how, how can I do this and, and learning and everything I can about it? And I, I suggest you do too. You know, this is, but we've got to create art, it's, you know, education, entertaining education is a good thing. And we need to make the world peaceful and prosperous for every human being. And I'm just, uh, kind of rambling so I guess I'll make this a short video um, you know it's free enterprise is a good thing you know artificial intelligence is a good thing and we need to we need the state you know the laws of our country to it's kind of like the first amendment you know the problem with gun violence for example just using this as an example so the rule is people have a right to bear arms it's, and you, it's kind of like principles before personality is another way of putting it the principle is we have the right to bear arms okay and that's so the state needs to figure out ways to make that work you don't like say oh some people got killed because of, with guns you don't say oh we got to get rid of the guns no, that's not how you do it, man. You figure out, okay, the rule is people have a right to bear arms, so how do we make that work? You teach people how to be responsible with guns and how to handle guns and how not to handle guns. And that's what you do, man. It should be taught in every school in the, in the world about weapons and how dangerous they are. And you should be teaching elementary kids about them so that if they accidentally you know, find one, Actually, you know, accidentally, you know, they don't hurt themselves or somebody else with it. And so it's the same thing with artificial intelligence. We've got to, okay, we're building this. We got this new technology. It's very powerful. It's very dangerous. We need to investigate it, figure out the truth about it, what it is, seek the truth, and come up with some rules about how to we can use it you know how can we use it in a way that is harmless and beneficial for all mankind you know individually and collectively 
you know, and that's, you know, that's the main point I wanted to make, is that I agree that artificial intelligence is very dangerous, but I also agree it can be used for good or evil, and that we should use it for good, and we should do everything we can to make, you know, to secure, make it, make it safe and secure and able to do whatever people want, want to use it for. The main thing about free enterprise, the reason why free enterprise is so important and valuable is that people can invent new things that nobody else ever thought of. See, if, they're, if everybody's just doing what they're told to do, that, that doesn't happen. You know, we just keep doing the same thing over and over again because everybody's just doing what they're told to do. How you know, and that's not this great creative freedom that has just been burst forth on the earth for the last 250 years. That's not how it worked. It worked by diff different people just doing whatever they thought was best for themselves and could benefit themselves. That's free enterprise, and that's what we need to. You know, organize our society to to nurture that, not you know try to stifle it. And you know, it's like this weird new. I don't know what this is going on. Where these people want to get rid of freedom and free enterprise and private property. What? Who would ever think that that was a good idea? It's just inconceivable to me. Because I know that it's like cause and effect. That, you know, the free enterprise is the cause. Prosperity is the effect. And from what I've seen, every place that people have tried socialism or any kind of socialism, communism, you know, you know national socialism or Marxist socialism, it's always failed miserably. Not just, well, a little bit, but terribly. The reason China is so prosperous right now is because of trading with the capitalist nations, you know, the free world traded with China and we tried to help them. They were starving to death when I was in high school. You know, we were going like, oh my God, how are we going to feed 600 million starving Chinese people back in the 1970s? In the United States, we had the Green Revolution. We flooded the world with cheap food. and. You know, I grew up on a farm. I know this happened. I was there when it happened. And um, now we're going, oh my God, how are we going to keep up with the Chinese people? They're this China, this giant communist empire that was trying to take over the world. And I love the Chinese people as much as anybody. I mean, they're, I studied traditional Chinese medicine. You know, they're, they're human beings just like everybody everybody is. But I don't want to be controlled by any communist government or any other kind of government. I want free enterprise. I want that creative freedom that we that enabled us to produce all that prosperity during the, my lifetime, you know, the 20th century. We, we did all, look what we've accomplished. That was America that, that did that, and the communist or the free enterprise, the free world did that. You know, and then, you know, we thought we could just after the communist, you know, the USSR collapsed. Then we thought, oh my, we could let down, you know, we could let our, you know, what a relief we can let down our guard. But no, first the Arabs had to pick a fight with us. And so now we're all up in arms in defense against that. And we finally kind of winding down that battle. And now the Chinese are trying to take over the world. You know, it's like this free enterprise system must be global. It cannot be part of the world. You cannot have part of the world free and allowing any kind of totalitarianism to fester anywhere around the world. We, you know, we've got to set, you know, we created the United Nations. I've read the United Nations Charter and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. They're good ideas. They're not perfect any more, any more than the United States Constitution is perfect. None, ne, ne, neither of them are perfect, you know, but it's a pretty good, decent, fair system for the world of rules. 
And I believe we should be teaching that in, in every school in the world and teaching people that we having them read the Constitution. You read the uh, the the U Charter of the United Nations and study it and learn it and understand what's going on. And the the you know here, here's one that really kind of gets me is the whole. Uh, uh, you know, the 17 sustainable development goals. All of them are really good. In fact, all 17 of them are good, if you really want to know the truth. But the 17th one is that corporations would cooperate with the United Nations to bring the rule of law to all the nations, you know, like third world nations and stuff like that. And I, I think that's a good idea. But now we got like these corporations that are just they're acting like totalitarian dictators you know telling people what they can think and watch and say and stuff like that and you know it's like abuse you know it's just the same thing with the united nations and and that whole international system of government it's not the international system of government is not the problem. The United Nations is not the problem. It's what the people working at the United Nations are doing. That is a problem. It's definitely a problem. You know, the, the corruption and the oppression, the totalitarianism, you know, the, you know, the elitism is corrupt. It's corrupt. There is no elite human beings. There's only one class of human beings. And anybody thinking that they're more or less important than anybody else is wrong. They're just, it's ignorant. It's, it's evil. You know, that's the cause of all conflict in the world is people thinking they're more important than anybody else. And we need to stop doing that. And we need to teach people not to do that in school, in every part of society, that it's not okay to think that way. It's not okay to talk that way. You know, it's just, racism is just one little kind of form of that. You know, thinking that you're better than somebody because of a difference in race. It's just ignorant. Anyway, I don't know if this is going to be a good video because it's been kind of a rant. The main thing I wanted to say is that artificial intelligence can be a good thing. You know, it can be used for good and it can also be used for not so good. You know, you know, selfish, selfish ambition is the dark side of human nature. And, you know, and so avoid that at all costs, you know, because that's, you know, Submission to God is the inner essence of every religion. I've studied most of them, you know, all the main ones I've studied, and they all talk about it. You know, each one has its own way of saying the same thing, but they're all saying the same thing, you know, and getting all up in arms over the semantics of how they say it is ridiculous. They're all saying the same thing, which is, submission to God and obedience, you know, and seeking God and seeking the truth and, and f learning and following the laws revealed by God. God, he reveals the truth, you know, and he's, he's done that over and over again all around the world, mostly around the Middle East, and South Asia, you know, India with Krishna and Buddha but mostly the, over in uh, you know, the Middle East, Israel, the Holy Land. That's the Holy Land. And it, it, that's where, you know, I'm just, I love God and I love the human race and I want the world, I, I don't want people to suffer. I want to try to, I wish I could prosper. I wish I could benefit, you know, somehow and be a, a very high performance. Um, holistic healer and teacher and to help people learn. I, I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to cause any trouble for myself or anyone else. I just want to make the world a better place. And these stories, that's what these stories are for, is to help you and help make uh, the world a better place for everyone. 
So, peace be with you and uh, have a great day.